an endpoint. What's the point of an endpoint? We love okay. endpoints. All right. <laughs> endpoint protection. We're protecting the endpoints. All right. Welcome, everybody, to another Compliance Quarter 101 Endpoint Protection, where we are going to talk about the basics of uh, CMMC cybersecurity. So, one, here, let's, we were tr doing this before the show. One, <laughs> let's see if we can do this. Wait, hold on. You got to come back I feel over. Like here. I'm in a drunk driving test, and they want to see if right. I can put this on in front of my nose. Okay. Okay. 101. 101. All right. So we are talking today about endpoint protection because it is something Noelle tells me she hears a lot about on compliance calls. Um, and so why don't you just go ahead and tee that up for us and the audience as well? Sure. So just to give kind of like a background, because, you know, people, this is also something I've noticed too, is that the term endpoint can kind of mean something different to everybody. When CMMC is talking about it, it's notoriously talking about like a laptop or a desktop it can also be kind of referencing a mobile device, but for the most part, CMMC is pretty good about saying a mobile endpoint if it's talking about a mobile device. So for the sake of this conversation, we're just going to say it's a laptop or a desktop. So something you're doing, you know, computing with that has like a monitor and a keyboard kind of situation. Right. And you have to protect that. Now, what does that mean? You know, do we have to like put it in a locked box and nobody can get to it? I mean, you could do that, but that's not oh, a good idea. Yeah, probably not the most useful thing business case wise. So what we're talking about is things like encrypting the hard drive, making sure that there is antivirus on the machine, making sure that there is multi-factor or two-factor authentication to, to log into the device, that kind of stuff. Um, it's nothing that's really too crazy, but um, I know that it can be kind of overwhelming to a lot of people. I've been on a lot of different phone calls with our current customers and prospective customers who are very concerned about endpoint protection. And they say, well, why is my endpoint in scope? Everything's right. in, 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 encrypted with Prevail. Why does it have to be like that? And I think that a lot of people are kind of feeling that way. Well, you know, you have, there's a lot of different reasons to keep the endpoint protection and a lot of different ways to look at it. There, there are going to be a very tiny, very tiny percentage of people who can get, who can get away with not doing endpoint protection and, and keeping everything completely off the endpoint. That is a very difficult thing to achieve correctly. So we are not advocating for that at all. That is right. very, very difficult to do. I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm definitely not saying that. But it is difficult. Um, it's arduous. And it can require a whole lot of time and effort to do right. that. So we're going to make those theoretical exercises that we know is out there. But yeah, practically, we don't want to do it. Um, it's definitely not what we would encourage, for sure. Definitely not. I think one thing to highlight, you know, just to make the point perhaps a little bit more blatantly, Noel, mm -hmm. is that... Uh, you know, endpoint protection is definitely in CMMC. Um, and so that is why it's an important part to, that you have to get right. Um, I think we were talking before the show just how many controls um, are affected by endpoint protection. Quite, quite a few. I mean, directly taught, like ones that directly reference it somewhere. Um, information security, or excuse me, information assurance does. Access control definitely does. Configuration management definitely does. It's all over right. that one. And then systems and communications. Those are just the ones that directly reference it. There's a lot of other ones where it's sort of the endpoint is either kind of the endpoint protection is implied in the control or it's directly affecting the control or something like endpoint protection is all over CMMC. Right. And so even if you're using Prevail, right, which uh, encrypts your data in the cloud, you still have to worry about your endpoint, your physical Absolutely. computer. Yeah. Um, I think a, a thing to perhaps note is, you know, what is the risk of not using endpoint protection? That is an excellent point. There's so many risks involved with not having endpoint protection, not the least of which is, you know, simple stuff like, okay, let's say that I take my computer you know, from one, one office location to another office location, and I'm in my car and, you know, God forbid there's a, there's a car accident, you know, and then that computer is just kind of sitting there. Maybe, you know, I end up having to go to the hospital or whatever, and I leave the computer. That computer is there for anybody to take. Somebody grabs that computer. If your hard drive is not encrypted, if you don't have MFA, somebody could easily hack into that machine and get any information they want. And that could be CUI information, but also even aside from the CMMC side of it, there's intellectual property information. There's, you know, there's stuff that companies want to keep. There's right. financial records, HR records. You know, there's a lot more than just having to worry about the CMMC, you know, checking a box. It's actually just good. It's good business practice to make sure that an endpoint is managed in a way that you know where it is, who's who's actually accessing it. And if 
you know, God forbid it ends up out of my hands into somebody else's who's not trusted. I have ways of making sure like, oh, I'm okay. It's going to be fine. If you have that MFA set up, you know, nobody's going to be able to get into that machine anyway. If the, in, if it is encrypted in the hard drive, nobody's going to be able to get to the information. Good. You know, problem solved. Then right. you have the other side of it. Well, let's say that I'm, you know, working from home and I think that I have my wireless network set up pretty great and I've got a firewall that I think is pretty good. Well, maybe I didn't know what I was doing very well. Maybe I didn't set it up as great as I thought I did. If I have antivirus and anti-malware on my machine, it's going to capture any sort of, you know, attempted sort of infiltration of my, of my system. If I don't, and I didn't set up that firewall correctly, or if I didn't set up, maybe I didn't set up my Wi-Fi password well enough. I mean, there's, there's simple stuff you can do. Somebody could come in and again, the same situation, steal any sort of CUI possibly, and also intellectual property and any other kind of sensitive information. So it's really, aside from CMMC, this is just truly good, basic cyber hygiene. Like right. it should, this should be the baseline for every company, honestly. Right. Even if CMMC had never um, come into our, our world, we would still want to have endpoint protection. Definitely. Um, you know, for people who aren't necessarily familiar with endpoint protection solutions, um, what are some of the ones that we know about? We should rec we should know we're not um, endorsing any. Nope. Uh, these are at least ones you should uh, know about before you decide to go whatever way you are going. But just some of the popular ones out there, Noel. Yeah, definitely. So the two big ones. Um, there's BitLocker, which is actually that comes with. I think I think for the past few years, especially, it comes with every. Uh, Microsoft machine. So if you have a PC there, if you go ahead and like search, you'll you search BitLocker on your machine, it'll come up and it will encrypt your hard drive if you turn it on. And then there's an encryption key that you can keep somewhere in case you know you have to de-encrypt it for whatever reason. The same thing is true on Mac. It's called File Vault. It's the same thing where you can encrypt right. the entire hard drive. Um, so those are, again, out of the box. That's like right on your machine. You know, so you don't even have to buy anything. You know, the, the machine already has it. Um, there's also tons and tons and tons of antivirus and anti-malware and that kind of stuff. I mean, there's just like an endless amount of those. Um, there's ones, there's ones that are actually like from Microsoft, for example, like Microsoft has Microsoft Defender, which is a whole suite of things. There's ones outside of that. There's stuff like WebRoot and, you know, there's the McAfee suites and all the ones in Norton and the ones that we all know. Then there's also the MFA solution. So like Duo is a good example of that. That is a, a third party MFA, uh, multi, MFA is multi-factor authentication software, but also that can come, you can also get that from like Microsoft. And I believe Apple has a solution like that as well too, that you can get from, directly from the manufacturer if you're more comfortable with that. But yeah, there are tons of options out there when it comes to these solutions and they're all different price points and all different functionalities. You just have to kind of evaluate and be a really, you know, be as educated a consumer as you can be and find the one that works the best for your company. Yep. Um, and just in terms of making sure you have the most recent uh, version of these solutions and making sure you update them. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I think that's another important thing to yeah. know. Patching and updating is very important. Yes. To on, on everything as a blanketed statement as well, patch and update. All right. Um, so I think that we've covered endpoints uh, protection. I don't think we have anything else to say. All right, people. Fantastic. Turn into your next 101. Can you give me the 01? All right, 101. Folks, it's been a pleasure. Uh, we'll look for you next time on Prevail's Compliance Corner. <laughs>